Great. Right, everyone, this is Christine Folds uh, from Folds CRM. And Christine, please tell me all about you and all about you, your journey, what you do, how long you've been in business for, and in your own words, what do you actually do? All righty. Uh, so, yeah, hi, I'm, I'm Christina. I'm um, expert in CRM and email marketing. Uh, it's not really what I studied in university. I actually studied uh, to England, um, to in a way. Um, because I'm originally from Germany, that needed a CRM exec. Never heard of CRM before. You know, I just thought I give it a go, and if I don't like it, I, but I actually really, really enjoy customers, um, the strategies and the analytical side of things. It's like a job where you never get bored because you can pull from different areas within the marketing sector. Um, and so within a year, I became a head of CRM, and then I had my own team, and we worked there. I worked there for like four or five years. And then it became, you know, life goes on. And, you know, we, my husband and I, or fiance at the time, thinking about starting a family and we just didn't want to do it in London. Okay. The, the plan was always to either move back to Germany to be close to my family or close to his family in Cornwall. So we decided then to do it in Cornwall. And, you know, looking at the landscape in Cornwall, there wasn't really anyone doing CRM related work. There are companies out there that offer, you know, CRM software solutions, and they're going to build bespoke CRM um, platforms. But there wasn't like an expert that looks at the strategies behind retention and customer relationship management and, you know, and how you ensure that the customer stays loyal to you as the brand or the person, depending what your, your business does. So I, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to give it a go. I was very, very lucky that my company that I worked for in London kept me on for another year as a consultant. So in that time, while I was working for them, I could also build up my own um, business, you know, just starting with a little website, going to a few meetings, connecting with people. And then, you know, while we had the children, I started building the business on the side. And the more independent the children became, the bigger the business became. So it, it, it was like... Um, a growing with the children type approach. And I've been doing this now for 11 years. Oh, wow, 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 that's great. It's good to hear that business leaders are getting some work-life balance you know, in order as well, because that's been a main challenge there for a lot of business leaders out there. And um, at just beginning, uh, beginning the interview, it was a bit glitchy. I'm not sure if that you were in and out of, uh, your volume was in and out. So hopefully you we would have got that, but we'll let you know. <laughs> okay. But look at the challenges there, good the challenges, but challenges as a business leader. Uh what what is you what is you as a business leader, what has been your your main challenge there for you and your issues there that you have? All right. So when I started out, my idea was that I would be helping small to medium-sized businesses, uh, specifically here in Cornwall. But at this, at this time, when I first started, um, no one knew what a CRM was. No one knew what the logic behind was. So there was a lot of educating people. Now, uh, and then when you come from London, you know, and you've got like, you know, you come from somewhere else, moving into a small county, you know, you don't know anyone. And then you're wanting to teach them something as well. So there were quite a lot of hurdles involved in, first of all, getting your first customer. And then also wanting to do what I, I thought I should be doing. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to rethink the whole business model. Um, and to be honest, the majority uh, of my businesses are actually from abroad or outside of Cornwall. So I have a few, a few small business, medium-sized businesses here, but the majority is actually from outside. So that was the main challenge and the main learning curve because um, – I could not go out to Manchester, Birmingham, London, or fly to Stockholm, or you know, to meet people. So I was really relying on the digital side of things and how to you know find business. I see, I see. And um, what has been your 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 greatest, your biggest learning since you've been a business owner? Uh, just finding a balance. You know, um, I get to the stage now after eleven years where. Um, this is enough, you know, I don't need to push this hard anymore. 
you know, I need, I don't need to achieve more. I don't need more, more, more clients, you know, that kind of, you know, it's more about the quality now, not so much of the quantity, because at the beginning, when you start out, you're just going to say yes to everything. Okay. Because you need to get the ball rolling. You know, you're waiting for that snowball effect that, you know, you're growing. And now I'm luckily in a position where I can just go, you know, is this, is this new client going to fit in with what I want to do? Can I really help? You know, how much hours do I have to invest before we get to a stage where I can actually do what they want me to do? Because, you know, maybe the basics are not there yet. Um, so, yeah, so that has changed, really. OK, OK. I'm curious now. I'm really curious about the quality, the quantity and the quality. So regards to the quality side of things, I mean, what are you or strategies, solutions you're trying to or implement uh, in regards to getting the, I guess, the best out of your, um, your clients? Um, it's really about expectations. Mm -hmm. you know, um, when you start with a smaller client, they have very different expectations than when you work with a company that's quite well established and they have had their ups and downs as well. Um, and they know how much time you need to invest to get stuff done, which sometimes with a smaller client, they are not aware. And then they might not really like what you have to say for them to get to the point where they want to be. Um, so that's what I mean in quality, that we are all on the same wavelength. We know what we to expect and they're aware of how much work it's involved. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes, you know, those original, the, those first days discussion, they take so much time. Yes get on the same level of understanding that in that time I could have done something else you know it's all about like your opportunity cost and I'll get to that stage now where I'm if I'm going to go away from what I'm actually doing to get you know working with a new client it needs to be worth it for me in a way I know it sounds a bit arrogant um, and I don't mean it in a bad way but you know because I'm a business as well and you know I just need to evaluate whether it makes sense for me to take away time from existing customers to get new ones and learn and work with them from scratch. I see, I see, that's really good. And um, one of the things uh, business leaders I have spoken to is about, we spoke about COVID and the pandemic and how has it impacted their business. And, and for you, what has been the biggest impact for COVID-19? So for me, it was, I mean, it sounds bad, very beneficial. Okay. Because, because my area is all digital, um, there, so that I had lots of businesses that were more brick and mortar and they realized all of a sudden, you know, what I've neglected, the digital side of things, uh, I can't afford for my existing customers to disappear and go somewhere else where they can order or purchase items quicker and easier. Uh, I need help to ensure that that relationship stays intact. So I was like really, really busy in that time. I did lose a few customers and clients as well, which luckily have gotten back, like wedding venues, you know, hotels, pubs, those kinds of things, River Cruise Company, um, because they just couldn't operate. Okay. Uh, but then on the other side, other businesses, you know, increased their hours or needed more help. So that was all right. The biggest challenge it was work-life balance because I had two boys at home. They needed homeschooling. My husband was out working in school. He's a teacher. So I had like 40, 50 hours normal working week while also homeschooling and teaching. And, you know, and th that was just not sustainable. Yeah, yes, yes. And what one or two actions did you, you've taken because of the pandemic and how are they working for you? Uh, Work-wise now. Um, Nothing has really changed because, um, you know, work-wise, it was a fantastic period. So uh, I just ensured that I kept the new clients and existing clients. And then when the pandemic was over, I was lucky that the clients that I'd lost, they all come back now. Um, it took some of them two years. So the last one that I'd lost that came back at the beginning of spring this year. But um, I see, I see. And what what would be the best advice that you would give to a 18-year-old who's wanting to start a business? Um, set your expectations right. Uh, I always find whether it's with work or, you know, 
private life. If your expectations are not right, you're going to get disappointed and disheartened. So just be, I always find you need to be realistic and then you need to have a dream. Um, so, you know, the first five years of starting this business, I wouldn't have been able to do it without support. And that support was family. So whether it was childcare, so I could go to meetings or, you know, my, my husband having a job to support both of us while the business is growing. So even though you're really enthusiastic about your business and you believe in yourself and your abilities, uh, it takes time for people to catch on and believe in you as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, unfortunately, sometimes that takes more than just a few months. Yes. So I think, you know, the more complex your business is or the more your approach is different on you, the longer it will take sometimes for for people and other business to, to understand and take a leap because they have to take a leap. You know, they need to take the risk with you as well. And you need to understand that as well. That's right. That's right. And what would be the best advice? Or, or what, I mean, I'll say again, um, if you had to start your business over again, what would you do differently? I wouldn't focus so much on Cornwall. I wouldn't focus so much getting business locally. I would start to branch out and look within the United Kingdom and globally much quicker. But I had this in my head because I've worked for a big company in London before that I wanted to use the same mechanism and strategies for smaller businesses so that they could benefit from what the big guys are doing already. Mm -hmm. um, but the resources in smaller businesses are not as available as for you know, bigger businesses. Uh, and for them, they have different priorities, which now I totally understand. But at the time, you know, I just couldn't get my head around it. So that would, I would do this differently. I would research the market better. I would understand my clients better, do better um, segmentation in regards to who should I be talking to, understand their business needs better and, you know, focus elsewhere. And focus elsewhere. I get that. That's really good. And what's inspiring you today, uh, Christine? What's inspiring you? As a business leader and as a person. Um, I find, you know, like the way the technology is moving, and especially, you know, I still believe in email marketing. That's still my passion. I really enjoy it. And the way we can now integrate elements of, you know, they, people think it's video, but it's really an animated image, a GIF file. But the way we can make those more appealing and how um, artificial intelligence and deliverability and all that stuff works together and how we can make person click and then purchase i you know that's still a lot of fun and the way that the new software programs work and get developed um it's really exciting to see because i i you know in the last couple of years because everyone had to be digitally available there has been a lot of progress and a lot of change and um i mean it's work it's I mean keeping up with it is quite time intensive but it's fun as well that's good. Well, Christine, thank you so much. That concludes the interview. I'm going to take it off record and